everybody, Richie here from RecklessPixel.com with another episode in the Lens Wizard Lightroom series. So in this episode today, I want to show how to use a plug-in out of Lightroom. For those beginners that are just starting out and don't uh, maybe even know how a plug-in works and are just wondering about it, I just would like to show how I use a plug-in out of Lightroom. And I know plugins can cost a little bit of money and if you're a beginner, but you know what? The plugin we're going to use today is a classic and it's free and it's easy. It's part of the Nick Collection and it's called Color Effects Pro 4. And I'll talk more about the Nick Collection at the end of this and I'll show you actually where to acquire the free download for those plugins. So without further ado, let's get right in here. And we have kind of just a flat image here of Model Cali. Uh, Callie was down at the creek and we were shooting. We had a little bit of a photo shoot going on. It wasn't a serious shoot, so I did not shoot with a gray card or a color checker for my white balance. So we're going to run through that. And let's just zoom in close and see what we have. We have 1 25th of a second at f3.2 ISO 250, 135. So Callie's got really good skin. She has freckles but she there's no blemishes here she doesn't hardly have any makeup on she's got some eye makeup and of course some lipstick but her skin is pretty blemish free for a 19 year old girl so there's not a whole lot of editing to do here so i really don't have to go to photoshop and i thought this would be, just be a perfect image to use uh, as an example of how to use a plug-in right out of lightroom because if i had to do uh, blemish editing or something like that I would definitely go over to Photoshop so now we need to set this image up for what I'm going to do to it and I don't have a preconceived idea of exactly where I'm going so I'm just going to do this as a one-off as I'm making this video but I've done it many times so I, I kind of just know the little path that I'm going to head down so first we need to get into the develop module and no matter what module you're in, you can get into develop by hitting the keyboard shortcut of D. And D will take you over into develop. And we're going to go up here to basic. That's at the top. That's right where we start. And we're going to go with, we're going to try to eyeball this white balance. So we're at 52 and we're at plus 20 on the tint. First thing to do is just see what Adobe says about it and hit auto. And it kind of bumped us up to 55 and it took it up to 30. And I'm starting to see kind of a red overglow very slightly. I don't know if the video can pick it up, but on my ultra sharp monitor here, I'm seeing that. And so I'm just going to bring that down to 20. And that's where it was. See how that grays out. That's where it was when we went to as shot. So go back into, uh, well, now we're going to go into custom. And because once I change it, it makes it custom. So if I go to auto, see it puts it there. So I need to go back down and now it calls it custom. With that said, uh, over here on the temperature, I'm definitely gonna bring the temperature up into the 6,000 range, probably 62, maybe 65. I think 6250 looks good. I'm definitely gonna run my exposure up and probably bring it to about plus 0.80 for this particular image and contrast now I'm going to do something that you probably aren't going to expect but I'm actually going to bring the contrast down and kind of flatten this image out and when I say bring it down I mean way down because I'm going to use the plugin I'm going to use color effects pros contrast I like their the it's different algorithms than Lightroom so it's going to give me a different outcome now highlights, I don't have, if I had some really like blown out highlights or something, I might knock them down, but I ha have no highlights that other than these little uh, reflections here in the bokeh. So shadows, I'm going to run shadows and I'm going to open them up a little bit. I'm not going to go real crazy with that, but crazy enough to make it plus 40. Again, flattens it out even more. And I'm going to shift double click just to see where that puts me for a black point and the white point and <clears throat> looks pretty good the only other thing I'm going to touch is saturation and again I'm going to bring saturation down about 
25, uh, maybe 20. 25 looks good. I'm going to, as I'm building contrast, I'm also going to build some saturation with my plug-in. So now with all of that said, uh, I'm pretty much, that's where I want to be. So what I'm going to do is go down here to my thumbnail and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go up to edit in and I'm going to, these are all my plugins that I have and I am going to go to color effects pro four. Now dialog box is going to open up and because I made Lightroom adjustments, instead of just making the original, allowing me to use the original or edit a copy of the original, uh, I'm going to have to go with a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And that's not a problem. It's going to be a TIFF. This is all stuff that I have set up in my preferences, but I can go choose a PSD or a JPEG if I wanted to. Th these are strictly your, your preference. Uh, I probably would go with Pro Photo if I was editing this over in Photoshop, but for all intent and purposes, we'll just go with the web color space, which is sRGB. And I'm going to keep it at 16-bit compression. I like to go deep on that. And I'm going to leave my resolution at four. Uh, I'm sorry, at 240, just in case I decide I would like to, you know, print it out. Compression. I'm not going to make it a zip file, so that's it hit go and up here we're going to see preparing file for edit and what it's doing it's going to turn this camera raw file not turn it but it's going to copy it and make it into a tiff and then it's going to open right up and you gotta excuse me for one moment while i reposition okay so here we are in the color effects pro 4 interface and it's already applied a filter because what it does when it opens up by default it adds the previous filter that you were last working with in your stack so I'm going to take that out okay so here is our flat image that we've seen in Lightroom and over here on our left we have all of our choices essentially these are all of the filters that are available to you in Color Effects Pro 4 now if you open these up they're all a little bit different as far as how many presets they have. Some have a few presets, some have more than a few presets. We're not concerned with colorize, but I'm gonna go down to the one that is my favorite for this type of an image, and that is tonal contrast. Now, if I open this up and I click on default, and if I hold my space bar and then left click one time, that lets me zoom in to what I have preset my zoom to up here. So default gives me, these are the settings you can see over here, and it kind of gives me a harsh look. I don't really like it on a lady, maybe on a guy it would look good, or on a sports player, but it puts this roughness and gruffness to the skin. And if we go down here to strong, we can see it more prominent. And if we go to high pass, it kind of blows out the highlights a little bit but it's still there and you know it might be a good look for something but for what I'm doing today that's not what I want I want to go down to softening and softening does exactly that it softens and it also this is the preset and it comes in with a little bit of saturation uh, now if you remember I desaturated and I desaturated purposely because I knew that this was going to, by default, add me 20% of saturation. So if I feel it's too much softening, I can add control points, and I'm not going to get into control points too much today because that'll complicate things a little bit. That's a little bit more of an advanced part, but once you have added your filter, you, or you ha have chosen your filter, and you've, you're done adjusting it, you need to come down and hit add filter and it closes it up there into the stack and now it allows you to hit back and go choose another filter and you can just keep stacking these filters as many as you want now if you see I have some yellow stars here these are my favorites of all time that I go to so I want to go to pro contrast next and I'm going to open it up and for this one I want to choose the preset of dynamic contrast and dynamic you can see what it does and we can go up here and check the tick box 
turn it on, turn it off, and I kind of like it with it on. And I'm going to zoom in. I want to see what it's doing to her face. If I hold my space bar, it gives me my hand. I can look around. Uh, Callie, you know, as you can see, you know, she's got the freckles, but she's got very clean skin. And that just made this a perfect candidate to come over here and do this. If I had to do the editing, again, I probably would have went over into Photoshop to do uh, blemish editing. But I didn't have to do any blemish editing. So now, add that to the stack. I think I'm done right there. Uh, I will give an example just real quick of something else that you could do. Uh, I also like to use, but I'm not going to use it on this. I'm just going to show you as an example. And that is the default dynamic skin softener. Now, when you first click on it, it says calculating down here. Okay, so it softens the skin ever so subtly that it's hard to really see it. But if you go over here and take your eyedropper and come in on your skin, you can see that it kind of over softened it really. But what I can do is I can go down here and change the opacity. And you can do this with any of these filters. You can change the opacity, the amount of filter that you want to add. But you know what? I don't want that filter. I just wanted to show that as an example. So if I click my X, it takes it out of the stack and I can close my stack by hitting add filter. So I'm pretty much going to go with that right there and I'm going to hit save and what it's going to do is obviously save and take us right back into Lightroom. So now here we are back in Lightroom. We have our file is a TIFF and we can kind of zoom in and see what we did here. And so what you have to know is some of the plugins will give you a different preview in the plugin window than what it's actually going to give you back into Lightroom. But I have to say that Color Effects Pro is one of the plugins that gives you a pretty good image preview in the plugin window, almost the same as what you're going to see when you get back to Lightroom. Sometimes it's a guessing game. So now, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and finish this image off. Um, I see she's got on the black here, it added some blue. It does that with the contrast. That's kind of a little bit of collateral damage, I guess you could say. And if you hit the keyboard shortcut of Control, Shift, Alt, S, it brings us right into our HSL, which is U Saturation Luminance, and it puts us into saturation. And it also gave us automatically our little tool that we have here. So if I go over here and I put this on what, what was black in real life, but has this blue cast to it, you can see that it's highlighting the blue slider. So if I left click and hold and drag down and desaturate just the blue, it gives me my black color back to that fabric. So, and if I wanted to, I could go over here and do the same thing. I could brighten it. I could darken it even more if I wanted to. Uh, actually, that didn't look too bad, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with the saturation. So now I want to go back up to my basic. And what I'm going to do is go over here and I'm going to go into my presets and see what I can find that I like. Uh, let's hit the keyboard shortcut of V. Gives us our black and white just to see what a black and white might look like. I don't think black and white is going to do it for this edit. So I am going to now take it back over to color. And let's continue on down. I think I'll go with one of these fashions. This one has a vignette. And I kind of like that. I'm going to go with, this is, again, I had no idea what I was going to do and where I was going to end up, but for this edit, I think I'm going to go with like the editorial magazine look. So let me crop it, 
get my crop. Now, as you notice, I'm not using the the grid view like the rule of thirds grid. I'm using this other one that I can't think of the name of right off the top of my head right now. But I'm going to bring the crop in right there and has kind of put the blue back in again on that, that preset. So I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt S and I am going to hit the space bar to zoom in and I'm going to pull that back out of there like that because I just want that fabric to be kind of true color. I know it altered the color to bandana, that's fine. And to give it that editorial magazine look, I'm going to kind of wash it down a little bit by taking the dehaze down about 15. 15. Yeah, let's go with 15. So I'm going to take the dehaze down. If I zoom in, it just gives me that, what I call a kind of a washed out look uh, magazine editorial sugar kiss magazine-ish kind of thing. I like it. So there you go. There's the edit. I'm going to stop the edit right there and that's it. Call it a day on that. So now I told you I would, I would talk about uh, how to get the Nick collection. So let's open up a browser and let's just type in N I K and as you can see it comes up collection download and I suggest you download it right from Google uh, I also suggest that you scan it with your virus software after you download just to be sure but download it directly from Google because that would be your least chance of getting any uh, wacky stuff coming in on the download so that's it everybody how to edit using a plugin out of Lightroom and then back into Lightroom and it kind of gives you an insight into how plugins work. They all work a little differently. They are all a little differently because they're made by different companies and what have you. But essentially a plugin is just a third party piece of software that you can go out of Lightroom, edit in and come back into Lightroom. Hey, hit like, hit subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out. Uh, hit subscribe and come back to the channel to see more of the Lens Wizard Lightroom series. Thank you so much and have a great day.